Amphoteric solvents are substances that can function as an acid or a base. Now, you're already familiar with one amphoteric solvent. That is water. Water is an excellent solvent and it is also able to function as an acid or a base. So the acidic form is the hydronium ion H3O plus and the basic form is the hydroxide ion, OH minus. And it's pKa, or pKw, I should say, because it's for water, is 14. So that means that the equilibrium expression for this is one times 10 to the minus 14. So when water auto ionizes, it makes a relatively small amount of these two species. Now water is not the only amphoteric solvent. There are several others that I'm going to um, discuss. One of them that might be a little surprising is sulfuric acid. Now, you can protonate sulfuric acid. Into H3SO4 plus, and this is very acidic. And of course, you can also form a base from it. The pKa, or the pK for this, is 3.4. So, it's a lot more strong on the um, dissociation there. So, if you have a solution that is fuming sulfuric acid, which is where you would add SO3, gas into the solution, you could force more of it to be in the acidic form. And if you also add something that is stronger than sulfuric acid, you could protonate the, the acid. It's possible for hydrogen fluoride to function this way as well. as both an acid and a base. This is about 12. And then we can also look at some other molecules here, like acetic acid. And its acidic form would be so we can add a proton onto it. And of course the acetate ion is the base, methanol is possible, And there's a few others like ammonia and acetonitrile and, and of course more than I can list um, in one video. But this will just get the wheels turning about what's possible. So 
now that we've shown a few examples of amphoteric solvents and looked at the relevant pk values well let's talk about some of the uses of these so should be noted that each solvent will interact with various acids and base compounds and the strength of each acid will vary when we're comparing it to the familiar aqueous solution or the water as a solvent and we can use this to our advantage when we want to look at very strong acids or very strong bases to try to find out which is stronger or what kind of reactivity we can tease out from the interactions in non-aqueous environments. You may have heard of the leveling effect. This is where if we're in water, as, a, as an example, because it is the special solvent, um, the strongest acid that could exist in water is H3O+. Plus, right? And that's because anything stronger will react with the solvent to form this acid. Now, H3O plus is a strong acid, but there could be stronger acids. And in fact, we already know several of them. Um, well, you'll notice that if you take nitric acid, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid, and hydrochloric acid in water, they all have essentially the same strength at a given concentration. Now, yes, they don't have the same reactivity, but that has more to do with oxidizing power than acid and base reactions. So if we take out potential oxidation reactions and we're focused more on just acid base, then all of those acids that I just listed are exactly the same strength because those acids will no longer exist in water. They will all form H3O+. So because of the leveling effect, we would not be able to tell a difference between those particular acids in strength. If instead we change the solvent to something like acetic acid, now we can change um, what's being formed and that will have a different pK value, which will affect how much this is protonated. It might not be fully protonated anymore. And if we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and write out the example for sulfuric acid. We'll have a different kind of reaction, right? So we'll have our equilibrium. And now this acid is the strongest acid that's possible in glacial acetic acid or 100% acetic acid. And if we use this, we can determine that in acetic acid, perchloric acid, is stronger than hydrochloric acid, which is stronger than sulfuric acid, which is greater than nitric acid. when in water, all of these were equivalent. So we can use different systems to examine the reactivity 
and notice that, wow, perchloric acid's very strong. And it's a little surprising that hydrochloric acid is uh, stronger than sulfuric in this case. Now, if we have um, different species, right, that are even stronger, then we may need to go with harder and harder to protonate species. Or harder to deprotonate species, as the case may be over here, to determine acid or base strength. Just because once something gets very strong, then you have to use different substances to try to figure out which one's the strongest one. And so if you have something that is able to protonate something that's already a strong acid, then you can for sure tell that, wow, that's a really strong acid that's protonating something that's already a good acid. Now, it's important to keep in mind that in, in a lot of cases, it's possible to do reactions that you might not think would happen. And you can look here where we've removed a hydrogen from a carbon. And that's a particularly difficult thing to do. This is a fairly strong bond. And there are plenty of species that are capable of that. And, and one species that we're probably familiar with that you need to watch out for are hydrides. Things like uh, lithium aluminum hydride or sodium hydride are examples of hydrides that are very reactive. And these can act as very strong bases. Now, when we're looking at organic chemistry, we might think of lithium aluminum hydride as a great reducing agent, and we'll think of sodium hydride as a very strong base. But both of these do generate H negative in solution, and that is a strong base. And so when we're working with these, we actually use a different kind of solvent than an amphoteric solvent. There's non-amphoteric solvents. Which, if you're familiar with organic kind of uh, speak, would be um, aprotic. So it doesn't allow protons either on it or off of it. So... Another way of saying aprotic in, in this case. Um, so it's neither an acid or a base. And you would want that in cases where you have extreme reactivity. In other cases, when we're looking for differences in reactivity, or we would like to function in a solvent that's not water, you definitely want to consider the acid-base properties of your solvent. So this is a little bit about amphoteric solvents.